Masa, thank you. It's a yeah. pleasure to see you. Yes. It's been a long time. You yes. look well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I did a lot of reading, as you might expect, of, of uh, many of the stories about you and SoftBank of late and the Vision Fund. Somebody was quoted as saying, Masa, thank you. It's a yeah. pleasure to see you. Yes. It's been a long time. You yes. look well. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, you know, I did a lot of reading, as you might expect, of, of uh, many of the stories about you and SoftBank of late and the Vision Fund. Somebody was quoted as saying, there is no one on the planet in a better position to influence the next wave of technology than you. Not Bezos, oh. <laughs> not Musk, but you, in part because of the risk you're willing to take, the money you have at your disposal, and a lot of other things. Do you agree with that? No, no, I'm just a still small startup. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> With over $100 billion at your disposal, you're not a small startup. You don't think that you have an, a, an ability to influence significantly sort of where technology is going? No, I'm excited uh, to be part of it. Uh, things are happening without me, but uh, still, I would like to support entrepreneurs with who has dreams and passion uh, technology is evolving very quickly so if I can be a, a good uh, facilitator or supporter I will be very excited to do so you know when you talk about technology evolving quickly you've been at this for some time since the early 1980s yeah give me a sense as to how much or more quickly things were evolving than they had 10 15 20 years ago you know, last 30 years, um, three things matter in, in our industry. The computing CPU power, the size of memory, and communication speed. Those three things has uh, uh, improved a million times, a million times each of them. So it's a huge um, impact in technology and lifestyle of the society. But I say, from here on, what would be the speed of uh, improvement? Another million times. Another million times in computing power, another million times in size of memory and communication speed. So it's not slowing down at all. Uh, I think the power of computing would make uh, artificial intelligence uh, really come to truth. And um, many of the uh, forecasting, um, prediction, um, manipulation of uh, robotics with uh, smart intelligence, all those things are coming. Right, and that's been a focus of yours, I know, in terms of where you're investing. I think you've said AI will be the biggest revolution in human history. Yes. Uh, bigger than anything we've seen? Much, much bigger. And why? Because, you know, on the earth, there are many living beings 
but mankind had been the, the best, most uh, smart and powerful uh, effect, everything on the earth, uh, with the premise that mankind had the smartest intelligence. But finally, mankind has invented by ourselves something could be smarter than ourselves in many aspects. And so, you know, mankind invented tools. The tools made cultivation for the farming and so on. But there was a premise that mankind's brain is always smarter than the tools that we control. That's why we were controlling them. Finally, the tool may be becoming smarter than ourselves. So that means whatever we have been using tool for industrial society, um, paradigm, big paradigm shift is happening. Uh, and everything should be redefined. The way we have been using the tools, the way we have been living, uh, productivities, all those things, uh, every industry will be redefined. So we're in the early stages still of that. Uh, beginning, just the beginning. But we're moving more quickly than we had, and yes. to your point about yes. a million times. Yes. So if AI is going to become a million times more powerful than it is right now, uh, I can only, well, it's hard to imagine. How do you see, or what, what do you see when you look forward 20 or 30 years? I know you have a 300-year vision, but even just 20 or 30 years from now when it comes to this yeah. view you have. Well, within 30 years, uh, definitely, um, things will be flying. Um, things will be running much faster without accident. Uh, we would be living uh, much longer, much healthier. Uh, so the, the disease that we could not solve in the past would be uh, cured. And that would be thanks to AI? Yes, of course, definitely. So the disease, uh, there, are, there are many diseases like cancer and so on, uh, which we could not help millions of people's life. Uh, the cancer would no longer become uh, the disease that we should be afraid of uh, because of the artificial intelligence. It will solve uh, the issues that we could not solve. You believe that? I believe totally. And do you believe that's within our lifetimes? Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, I don't know who, whose lifetime, <laughs> but uh, uh, in the next 30 years, I definitely think that that is happening. The, we have the mobility with uh, automobiles and uh, so on, but there were lots of accidents. Millions of people died because of the accident. Uh, that would no longer be the case. Uh, autonomous driving, autonomous flying, uh, distribution of goods uh, and food, all those things. Uh, today we are uh, you know, driving ourselves. That would no longer be the case. So that, uh, so that uh, uh, AI would make the transportation uh, to cause zero accident at the, at the end. All right, but so this world that we're that you think a great deal about, where people are no longer getting sick and they're no longer dying in car accidents, so they're conceivably living far longer. But what are they doing all day? Are they, what is work going to be in this world if the machines are smarter than the people? There will be always a new job, new excitement. People can still come up. Uh, people would be having you know, art, uh, music, entertainment, uh, creative jobs, uh, talking like we are doing right now, uh, communicating among, among the people. Uh, we're helping each other. We discuss each other. We, we get uh, curate, curation by other people saying, hey, this is nice food to have. Let's go eat, you know. Uh, all those things. Uh, would be uh, exciting, more human-like, more human-like job that, that, that will always come up. You believe that? I totally because believe Because you know, of course, that there is a debate about AI. I know. I mean, Elon I know. Musk, for example, uh, is very concerned that it will 
be used not for good, but for perhaps evil, or that we'll get to a point where the machines control us, are robot overlords. You don't think that? I'm optimist, okay? Uh, there will always be an issue. There always have been an issue, but we, mankind is smart enough. We always try to adapt to the new situation. You know, only 100 years ago, just 100 years ago, the occupation, the job, 90% of the workers' job was farming. And today in advanced countries like US, Japan, it's only 5%. Only 5% of the people's job is farming today. But just 100 years ago, 90% of the job of the human was farming. And even as of today, I was amazed. Uh, just last year, I was talking, chatting with the Indian people. And in India, as of today, still, 90% of the job of the people is a worker, I mean, the farmers. So today, 90% of the job in some country is uh, still farmer. 100 years ago, 90% uh, of job in US, uh, Japan, uh, uh, some of the countries in Europe were still farmers. 90% now became 5%. But when it became 5%, what happened to the job? People still have many other exciting jobs, creative jobs. So I think uh, there would, would be always... You uh, do? Yes. But, but the world you're describing is one in which, as you said earlier, the human brain was still superior. The world that you're seeing in the not-too-distant future that will no longer be the case. So how can we know? Well, we can still, you know, create things. We can still enjoy. We can still uh, try to sell something, try to design something, try to communicate uh, with other people. Just a sweating job, you know, that uh, people did not that much enjoy. But we had to do it just to live, just to earn the income to eat food and uh, live in the house and, and wear the clothes. We had to have some income uh, just to live. And for that purpose, uh, many of the people were doing the sweating job, not necessarily enjoying it. Uh, they had to work to live. And those had to work to live would be, many of them would be replaced by more efficient solution, which is a smart robot, robot with intelligence, okay? So uh, that we can, we can shift to more, you know, exciting things. You know, in you, Roman Empire, Roman citizens, they were so rich, so rich, that they didn't have to do um, primitive jobs, uh, because they had servants, they had many other, mm -hmm. uh, you know, people to support the Roman citizens. What did the Roman citizens do? Did the Roman citizens become all sad? They lost job and they lost things, uh, uh, and uh, did they have a sad life? No, they enjoyed because they they got the free wine, free bread, free bread, <laughs> and free entertainment in Colosseo, and free music, a free bath, water. So uh, the society uh, became so rich that they provide those basic income things that they they needed. And what did they do? They still discuss. They still debate. They talk about politics. They talk, do the education, entertainment, you know, they, they talk about what next, you know, a, a new frontier mm -hmm. that they should go after. So they were still, they were still enjoying, they were still excited, and they were still increasing their success. So when AI is ascendant and its intelligence exceeds our own and robots are all over the place, yeah. you and I are going to be relaxing and having a good time. Good time, great time, and and still discussing many things. We will, yes, okay. and uh, hopefully still, doing an interview still. Who knows? Yeah, you yes, know? definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay, and th these are important jobs that they you are. are do that you are doing. Do you think we'll ever merge with machines? 
Majus. The singularity, the yes. idea that yes. you sort of will become, yes. uh, will we'll kind of, our consciousness will merge yes. with, a, with a robot in a sense, and AI yeah. will almost sort of be part of our, our brain? Definitely, I think so. You do? I think so. So even today, you know, we don't have to memorize so many things because you can Google it. Mm -hmm. So it is like a part of extension of your brain so that we don't have to do some primitive stuff. We can use our brain for more thinking, you know, more thinking, creative things. You know, even part of use of the brain is no longer the memorizing, you know, what number of the year, what has happened, uh, where is, you know, the, what is the shape and the uh, look of this plant and uh, roots, uh, because we can very quickly Google it, right? So, but uh, our brain is still functioning in many ways. Part of the thing, it becomes easier, but the other side of the brain is still being very active on thinking, communicating, and so on. It's the same thing. It's the extension of brain become uh, seamless b between the virtual uh, reality and the reality. Uh, it's it's extension of life. Which, is that something you would want to do? Yeah. You'd I'm, be happy to merge with sort of a sort of yes non-human yeah, entity. I, yes, I will. I will be happy to have robot companion in the family. You know that we created Pepper. <laughs> we can talk to them. We can right. have fun together. Uh, just to, I, I want to move on, but. Um, this world, do you see people having a uni uniform income? You know, there's been some discussion about that in this country, that we're going to have to pay people who no longer have the jobs that are taken by AI and robotics. I think basic income concept could be interesting. So uh, there will be a basic income that people can have to make living. But then on top of that, there would be still be a, a competition to get more richer life, uh, competition to get uh, more excitement uh, and, and so on, which will be a driving engine for innovation and evolutions. But, uh, you know, simple stuff like uh, creating the meat and creating the uh, the vegetables, uh, you know, uh, catching fish, all those simple stuff would be done by uh, smart robots. By machines. By machines. Smart robots, okay? They would be helping us so that basic income stuff uh, would be provided, uh, you know, because there would be renewable energy cost of electricity become almost nothing, almost as cheap as the air or, you know, sunshine. And hopefully then we've conquered climate change too if we're all renewables, but we're running out of time there. We, we should do that. We should definitely do that. Uh, uh, our company is becoming like uh, the second largest or largest renewable energy provider. So I am seeing, I am seeing, uh, uh, decline of cost of electricity dramatically, uh, exponentially, and it will almost become like a cost of water, you know, it will become so accessible. When the electricity cost, energy cost becomes so cheap, and that would provide the power uh, to, do, to function the smart robots, uh, then harvesting things. Uh, would be almost costless. So the food that we have to eat become almost costless, okay? Right. And the house, houses would become much, much lower cost, affordable for anyone to have nice living house, very, very low cost. And those construction, again, would be done by smart robots, okay? So the basic stuff that we need become so lower cost that anybody uh, on the earth can have basic, you know, 
Uh, much better standard of living. Yes, much, much better standard of living. For m many people. Yes, for most people. So this world that you've described and your ideas about how we're going to get there, what of your investments, whether at SoftBank or within the Vision Fund, best encompasses sort of this view? What, what of, of the many names and companies that you own a piece of or all of do you feel sort of best reflects and benefits from the world that you see? No, no. All, of, all of the 70 companies that we have invested in the last year and a half with the Vision Fund, uh, they're all AI-centric. Okay? They're all using the power of AI as, for the evolution. And they're, they're fantastic companies. Uh, Uber is having uh, uh, you know, uh, IPO maybe soon. Uh, and Pretty, I think, about right? The summer most likely, it sounds like. Or? I wouldn't say when, but uh, very soon uh, uh, seems to be. And uh, the Garden Health already had an IPO a few months ago. Uh, many, many companies are going to have IPO in the next uh, two, three years. But what links the companies across the Vision Fund is, is AI. Is AI. The fo that they that's all the only are one either thing. developing and are going to benefit from or are oh, pushing That's the, the only one thing. Uh, that's the only one thing I'm focused on now. So we are investing $100 billion just on one thing, AI. Even though it's across many different industries, right? So yeah. maybe autonomous driving. Yes, and uh, uh, construction with a power of AI, hotel with the power of AI, uh, medi medicals with the power of AI, um, you know, communication with the power of AI. How does WeWork? Uh, how does WeWork fit into that with the power of AI? Yeah. So many people still think it's just a real estate, one of the sharing office. Yeah, that that's they, buy, they buy real estate, <laughs> they lease it out, and that's the... That's not the, my view, okay? My view, it's, it's a working uh, community, okay? So Facebook, when Facebook came, people did, still did not understand the power of Facebook. Uh, people thought it's just a bunch of uh, photo and text uh, introducing people. That's not the case. It, it is a community. It's a graph. The relationship of uh, friends and families uh, and uh, additional friends that you have never met okay, become friends through the, uh, the power of the Internet. But now, uh, in the office space, there were not that kind of uh, the graph of the workers in the office if you if you are different company people, mm -hmm. but now with uh, uh, we work uh, with uh, almost half a million uh, members right now, they have the community graph. So if you are if you are a startup company, for example, and have a, a wish to provide a new product, you need the designing of the product. You need the packaging. Uh, pack, uh, also, packaging need the uh, designing, and uh, you need an accountant uh, when you start shipping product. Uh, you need lawyer for patent application. So you need many things uh, that's outside of your own employees' expertise that you want to get. But throughout uh, uh, WeWork membership, they can help each other. They can come in the same office, share from New York, from Boston, and meet and help each other among WeWork members. And with the power of AI, uh, can recommend, hey, by the way, you have, if you're looking for design of the package, there's another member in, in the WeWork office next building, uh, and you may want to ha have a meeting uh, uh, at the next beer party on Friday night. So that kind of recommendation can be done. Like uh, 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 Amazon is giving you recommendation, next product to do a shopping with your shopping history uh, and with your interest, it gives the recommendation with the power of AI. So if the recommendation of the product can be done with the power of AI, the recommendation of meeting the other people within the uh, WeWork membership can be done. Uh, so it will be much more productive, 
much more enjoyable. So even the beer party become more productive and fun. So it's it's about the community and the growth of that community. Yes. That is going to be the key to their revenue growth, I guess, because yes. they'll somehow participate or take a piece of those transactions, I would assume. Yes. And while you are increasing productivity and excitement, at the same time, cost of the the office expense goes down on the average like 40%. So from CFO point of view and CEO point of view, uh, it's great to have 40% reduction in cost. And at the same time, employees' satisfaction uh, on, of the workplace increased dramatically, like 30% increase in uh, happiness of working, working place. It's beauty in both sides. But right now they're losing money. Oh, Accounting-wise, okay, because they're growing so quickly and they're investing into the capex, right? Yep. But uh, it's a recurring revenue. It's an ongoing recurring revenue. It's like a subscription. You know the subscription of uh, magazines or newspaper and now Netflix. Netflix is still losing money, but the value of the company is tremendous compared to other media right. companies. It is based on the ability to continue to attract subscribers. That yes, valued the at this point. subscriber growing and you know recurring. Right. right. So the initial investment is just an initial investment. And Facebook was losing money even post IPO for a, while. for a while. And once they start making money, it's dramatical because the basic cost of the uh, uh, customer acquisition or in, uh, innovation is uh, not that growing exponential. It's almost flat. Uh, so initial cost is high and almost flat. But the revenue from the recurring subscription goes exponentially. Well beyond what it costs to lease all that space for them? Of course, of yeah. course. Uh, I mean, they're already the largest, I think, tenant in London, New York, and Washington, D.C. Yes. So we, we also started, uh, we work in Japan, in, in Japan, in just one year, already profitable. Already profitable. It's amazing. Right. Um, did you want to invest more in WeWork? Uh, of course, of course. Were you disappointed you were not able to, or that some of your investors, this has been reported, tried or succeeded perhaps in saying, don't invest as much as you want? Well, you know, I still want to invest more, and I want to increase. Uh, some of my investors said, Masa, you, you get too excited and too much concentration into one company. Don't go too far too much. But I, I still, uh, you know, I'm so excited. And uh, if I could increase, I would like to increase. You would. You yes, mentioned, I think you're course. over $8 billion that yes. you have invested. Yes. Um, how important is the relationship between and the conversation that goes on between you uh, and your largest investors in the Vision Fund, uh, PIF in Saudi Arabia, I think it's Abu Dhabi. Do they have influence over you in terms of what you choose or your team chooses to invest in? Well, basically, we make the investment decision, okay? We, we are the 100 percent of the investment uh, committee members. Uh, so we have a contractual rights, and uh, we are exercising that. Uh, but of course, they, they were the believer of my first vision and the dream. Uh, we have to respect that, okay? So we communicate with them uh, quite often. They support us uh, very well. Uh, we, we are very happy uh, and satisfied with the relationship. Uh, I would like to honor that. Uh, but uh, uh, actual investment decisions uh, and uh, activities with the companies uh, by ourselves. But in the case of WeWork, and this has been reported, you seem to indicate, they did have a voice in saying, slow down. To some extent. Uh, there is a contractual limit that beyond $3 billion per uh, portfolio company, uh, there is a, a consent that we have to get. I see. Okay. So but up to $3 billion, okay, we have 100% right to have sole decision making uh, between our investment committee, which is 100% SOFA members. Now you've spoken about starting another vision fund. Uh, well, 
it's too early. We still have uh, money, a lot of money. Then. Um, yeah, where are you in terms of the investment of the, I think you're at 100 or 98.6 billion. How much has been invested? We've invested uh, probably $70 billion or so, 65, $70 billion around that range. Uh, but we have uh, the banks who are uh, wishing to support us for e extending you know, leverage mm -hmm. uh, because the value of our asset has grown and many of them are, are having IPO uh, with a mature the value so that uh, uh, the banks are willing to uh, support us. So you'll have even, you conceivably you'll have access to even more capital yes. beyond 100 billion exactly. with that kind of financing based on the asset increase. Yes, exactly. exactly. Um, when do you see being done? I mean, do you have a sense as to when you sort of will have finished investing from whatever capital is available? Well, we have to see, you know, we have to see how many more exciting opportunity comes at what pace. Uh, but whenever uh, the fund one investment is uh, done, there are lots of interest that I am receiving that they would like to invest uh, into our next uh, investments. You think you could do it again? Of Raise course. another hundred billion dollar fund? I wouldn't say what is the size, but uh, I'm, I'm getting a lot of uh, inbound uh, call that they, they would like to come into our new investor, into us. And, and what about those who say, well, what really you've, you've inflated the value of a lot of companies. Um, that has been one of the key sort of um, uh, things that's occurred as a result of having this enormous pool of capital. What do you say to those who, who argue that? Well, at least our return on investment is very, very good. I'm very excited with the very success successful return on investment. So some people may say, well, Masa, you pay too much, uh, but uh, uh, still our company's value is growing very quickly after our investment. Well, you've already realized some returns. I mean, the NVIDIA uh, trade was yeah, a very good one. Yeah, it was a trade, though, not really an investment. You didn't own it very long. Right. Flipkart got sold to yeah, Walmart. Yes, um, yes. We have to sell some to harvest uh, when they get uh, matured. Uh, but then we reinvest to the new opportunities. That's how the investment, any investment company, have to function. And what are you seeing out there? I mean, you, we're in California now. You're nearby in Woodside. I know you have a lot of companies that come through and present to you. Are you seeing a lot of opportunities right now? Very, very exciting opportunity. Every day, new opportunities are coming to us. Um, and management teams, you feel like could get it done. I mean, what's the yes. most important thing for you when you make a decision about a business? Is it, is it the person running the business, the founder, or is it the business plan itself? It's a mixture of total, okay? So the business model have to be exciting model, you know, disruptive new models uh, make people say, wow, that's definitely important. And the uh, total accessible market uh, for that product or service have to be big enough. Um, the track record of growing the, the customer base, the user base, have to be growing exponentially. We're not investing into the early stage. Vision Fund is investing only the, uh, our size uh, above $100 million. Right. So it's typically later stage. Yes, given later that stage. Large. So most of the venture capitals uh, prepare for us and they, they invest ahead of us at the early stage, mid stage. We are uh, focused on later stage that we, we are supporter to, to their growth, right? So at our stage, we already have enough data of the actual customer, I mean the customers increasing and uh, our business model is uh, getting proved that it is a successful model and they're growing to uh, uh, absolute number ones. So those are the ones that we are focused to uh, put uh, turbo charge. Mm -hmm. Around the world, of course. I've asked you yes. about a couple of what are U.S. companies at this point, but um, in China you've been very active. Yeah, China. And any number of others. You just did a deal this week with Grab, I think it yes. was. Yes, yes. 
Um, I mean, these are enormous numbers you're putting out there. Yeah, even uh, DD uh, alone, we, we are investing $1.6 billion or something as the additional investment to our earlier round. So we've put uh, maybe twice, and this is maybe the third round that we are investing. And uh, if just for additional you know, uh, uh, injection of capital, ourselves, one ticket is $1.6 billion or something. But they're consuming a lot of capital, these companies. Yes. They're not making money yet. I mean, the ride hailing no. industry is not profitable. No, but they are growing so quickly. So their, the margin take rate is 20% or more. So it's actually very reasonable, very profitable business. Uh, it's just that they are growing so rapidly that a custom, initial customer acquisition cost, the creating infrastructure, those are the initial investments. But right. uh, the, the margin take rate is proven very, very healthy. On Uber, um, do you think that the rise of autonomous is going to make the business even more profitable? I'm talking obviously many years from now, but I'm still curious as to your thoughts given our earlier conversation. Does Uber become a more profitable company when it no longer has a driver, even though somebody's going to have to own the car? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely think so. The, as I said, autonomous driving is coming no matter what. Okay? That's a technology. That's the destiny of where technology is going to drive us. When the autonomous driving comes, the cost, cost of providing the service uh, dramatically get uh, you know more efficient so uh, it will provide a network of service uh, which people would uh, have uh, much lower cost and no accident or tremendously reduced accident uh, I shouldn't say zero accidents for a while right. uh, but it will dramatically reduce the rate of accident compared to human ac uh, uh, driving accident. I think that would be definitely coming very, very soon. And uh, uh, so lower rate of accident and lower cost and more reliable uh, you know, timing of coming and uh, uh, arriving, all those things would be coming. Uh, and the network effect that you have a scale of uh, cars so that the cars comes to pick you up uh, as quickly as possible. When you have so many cars in the network, the reaching to yourself becomes short, quicker. Mm -hmm. right? So that kind of network effect is needed. Uh, that means you have to have a scale. You have to have a big market share. And that, that, that's why we have number one market share company in every country uh, around the world. And do you see yourself wanting to be a long-term shareholder of Uber? I mean, you mentioned an IPO is coming. There will be an opportunity, therefore, to monetize some of your stake in the public markets. Will the Vision Fund do that? I would like to own as, as long as possible. Of course, uh, it all depends on the share price. Sometimes share price go too high, too quickly. Then we have to uh, harvest a little bit. Uh, but it all depends on the market conditions. But uh, w do I believe the company is gr going to grow exponentially? I definitely believe so. And you're happy with the management now, I would assume? I, I'm very uh, respectful to um, Dala, who is a new management. He's very, very smart, very well balanced. Uh, what do you mean by well balanced? No, no. He can he can be very uh, uh, offensive to to increase the um, the business, and he can also be very you know cost efficient, the uh, employees uh, you know morals and so on. So I, I respect that, uh, but at the same time I also have to um, you know uh, mention I respect uh, Travis tremendously. He's one of the best uh, you know, entrepreneur. He's a pioneer. Mm -hmm. you know, when you have to pioneer a new, new frontier, you have to have an energy, the passion, and out-of-the-box thinking. He's an aggressive, 
is one of the best. Okay? Do you, would you see supporting him in, in some of his new, potential new ventures? I would love to. Uh, I, it's all depend on the price. Okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, I, I tremendously respect him also. I want to talk a bit about SoftBank itself, which we haven't really uh, gotten to. Um, how much time are you spending running SoftBank versus thinking just about the investments for the Vision Fund or even for, for SoftBank itself? Well, so what is SoftBank, okay? Uh, until just a year and a half ago, I, I have been a CEO uh, of running operating company. Operating company, main operating company was telecom, yep. okay? Mobile telecom uh, company. Uh, selling iPhone and uh, Android phones and connecting network, servicing uh, customers. So I was a CEO, uh, direct CEO of operating company. Uh, so I spent 97% of my mind and the time into running operation. 3% I kept investing. But now I am opposite. 97% uh, just purely running investments uh, and 3% taking care of the rest of the operations. So, so hardly any. Well, you made the point at your last, in, your last investor call or video that SoftBank is not as complex as people seem to right. think or as it might once have been. You kept talking about it. Yes. You showed that big board of equations, but yes. then you came back to E equals MC squared. Yes. Um, and you also kept talking about 25 minus 4. Yes. <laughs> shouldn't yes. equal 9. It right. should equal 21. Are you frustrated with the way the market has been valuing mm, SoftBank no. and the underlying assets? No, I'm not frustrated. Uh, people need some time to digest uh, what the true value of uh, SoftBank. Uh, I'm, I'm not a seller of our share. Uh, in fact, we are buyer of our own share. You, bought, you announced yeah, the buyback that yes, was well received in the yes. marketplace. So I, I'm not frustrated. It's an opportunity for me. I have a big smile when, we, when I, I can buy back shares uh, at the price attractive in my view. Right. But, but, you, but you also made a, a point of going through the debt level. Because a lot of people look at SoftBank, it seems, and say Masa is the biggest risk taker. He always has been. He almost went belly up in 2000 when the yes. dot-com exploded. Yes. Uh, and it could happen again because of how much debt you have on your balance sheet. What do you say when you hear that? Well, I say thank you for worrying about me, uh, worrying about our company. Uh, I have a confidence in running in balance. Uh, that's why I, I explained uh, in my last uh, uh, quarterly result announcement, uh, people get confused when we uh, consolidated accounting, uh, the debt of our uh, portfolio family companies is considered as the debt of the parent. It's actually not. Each of the company has independent accounting and independent uh, balance sheet and independent ability to pay back their own debt. Uh, and if you are 50% owner, 51% owner of that company, the debt in accounting get consolidated into the parents. Uh, but parents' debt, software group debt is actually roughly $4 billion. Our asset is uh, $25 billion. So $25 billion asset minus $4 billion debt. That's a healthy, healthy situation and uh, lots of uh, excess value that we have. Right. And, but you're not frustrated that the market doesn't seem no, to I'm, I'm see that. I'm smiling. Yes, because, you are. Because, because I am a buyer. If I'm a buyer, I want to buy cheap. So that's, that's a great news for me. Were you, were you happy I, I, with I it? Am, I myself is the biggest shareholder of SoftBank. Of SoftBank, right. So that, you know, uh, I, can, I can increase my oh, ownership sure. at the lower price than uh, the actual underlying value. So I'm, I'm a happy buyer.
Uh, what uh, will you keep doing that? Is there a level at which, when 25 minus 4 no longer equals 9, if it equals 15 or 16, so to speak, when the asset value is more recognized, I guess, by the market, where you wouldn't buy back stock? No, no. We 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 already announced the, our buyback pro program. Uh, we would uh, fulfill uh, our capacity uh, sometime soon, and uh, it's progressing very well. And but underlying value of the asset, I still think, is growing very rapidly with the rate of success that we are doing on the Vision Fund. So I'm, I'm the, extremely... The Vision Fund is, is what? Is it like a hedge fund, 1 in 20? Or is that is it 1% management fee and 20% of the profits? How does... What's the fee structure? Yes, something like that. Similar. Something. Although you have 40% of it, or 40 billion roughly, is paying a 7% preferred return. Yes. And then the yes. 60 billion in equity of which you guys, SoftBank itself contributed to what, 28 billion or something yes. like that? Yes. So SoftBank uh, Group owns uh, close to 49 percent and uh, uh, of the equity. Right. And the partners and the management uh, own the rest. Uh, so uh, we, we, we are extremely happy uh, with the structure that we created. You are? But yes. you have to come up with 7% on $40 billion every year, right? We are doing much better than 7% in return on investment. So uh, our return on equity is tremendously good, uh, you know, uh, much better than simple uh, teens of the... Uh, you know, returns. Of the S&P even. I mean, you've said, I believe, that you've had a 44% IRR since 2000. Is that accurate? Yeah, something like that, yes. Do you think you can maintain that kind of rate of return with the Vision Fund? So far, so good. So far, so good. I'm competing with my own track record. Uh, so, so far, uh, Vision Fund return is within that range. Why are you so willing to take a, so much risk and have been, even though you had what people would describe as a near-death experience, so to speak, uh, 19 years ago? Because I'm a believer. I am a, definitely a believer of uh, the technology. Uh, some people don't like technology as an investment thesis. I love, I believe in the technology. I mean, you've said that you want SoftBank to be the company that makes the most contribution to human evolution. Yes. It's a pretty big statement. Yes. You believe uh, you can actually fulfill that? I would like to make it happen. How? By empowering the new forces coming, you know, the, these new young entrepreneurs. In my view, they are Jedi, okay? The young Jedi coming uh, out of school and uh, they, they start you know, learning how to fly. And some of them already jumping to fly. <laughs> I, I enjoy having them uh, uh, create um, you know, new lifestyle for, and saving a lot of difficulties that mankind is still facing, like uncurable uh, uh, disease that people are still dying today, as of today, or accident, they're still suffering as of today. Uh, our young Jedi will save uh, people from those things, uh, or unnecessarily hard work, sweating work. Those would be you know, no longer needed. Uh, that kind of thing is coming with the, our family members that joining into our... I mean, I like the way you describe the future, although, I mean, you are optimistic, yes. you admit yourself. Yes. Um, before we sort of wrap things up, Masao, I, back to, um, to SoftBank itself, just a couple of uh, questions there. There's been some criticism that um, you buy things at SoftBank and then transfer them to the Vision Fund at an inflated uh, valuation. How do you respond to, to people who say that? That's that is not totally, that is totally not the case. There is a fact that, uh, that the group of the companies that we have incubated, 
because the vision fund was took some you know eight months nine months to prepare during that time I warehouse and invest out of soft bank balance sheet and then transfer when the timing became ready the group of assets that we transferred after we transfer the value appreciation is tremendous so uh, there may be one or two assets that uh, we uh, reduce the value of the fair market value of the company but the vast majority and that as a total package uh, it is big return on investment mm -hmm. and uh, you ask to our uh, investors they are extremely happy with the return on investment. Um, something like ARM, I guess you still, the Vision Fund owns some of it, and SoftBank still owns as well, correct? Vision, but you own 100% of it overall. Yes, yes. SoftBank did 100% acquisition of ARM, right. and our uh, LP partners, investment partners, they strongly insisted that they want to have at least 25%. Why? They, because they believe, that, Masa, you have such a uh, great looking candy, share us some. And I said, no, no, this is the asset we bought 100% ourselves. Uh, and that was already before Vision Fund. I want to keep it. And they said, no, no, let us have some. So uh, they said they want to own 50%. I said, no, 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 I cannot do that. So I shared 25% of ARM. And, uh, uh, it was a public company. I right. paid. You, you paid a 43% premium, yeah, I believe. I, I paid, uh, yeah, over 40% premium, which I am very happy that I still got, a, was able to acquire at that price. Uh, so uh, it's preparing IPO again uh, in maybe next five years, within next five years. Uh, you take ARM public again. Yes, yes. That's the plan. Uh, yes. By that time, I think the appreciation of value will be uh, very substantial. So, uh, if you know, uh, if there was an opportunity that I could get 100% back, I'm I'm a happy buyer. You love that company. Yes. You see, because it fits your vision that everything will have a yes. chip in or chips yes. in it and, yes. and be yes. interconnected. Yes. Um, we haven't even gotten to Sprint. I was thinking then of 5G and Sprint. <laughs> yes. um, in the brief time we have, uh, are you confident you're going to get approval in the U.S. for the T-Mobile deal? No, uh, it is U.S. government who decides, right. not me. No, of course uh, not. I know you, if you could decide, it would be done. But yes. you've faced it before, and it hasn't succeeded. Um, so I am hopeful, and I am a believer that it will be approved, and it should be approved. Uh, because the merit to American consumers, to the American society is so large that there has been only two uh, uh, giant uh, companies and almost a duopoly. And uh, the other companies were barely you know, making money. Uh, so uh, not b big enough, good enough uh, threat or competitor to the two big giants. Uh, but having uh, the third force, uh, which will be uh, almost as equal rivalry, would make a real, real match. Right? And so that the price competition will uh, emerge. The real uh, uh, price competition would make uh, consumers accessible to much lower cost much stronger service, 5G. Right. You think uh, 5G is going to transform a lot of industries? Dramatically. Dramatically. The average speed to the access, sometimes we all face, sometimes, oh, the windmill right. spinning, you spinning. With five with years <laughs> ago, that's what you and I were talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, no latency anymore, right. right? 5G will make effectively 100, 100 times the speed and the capacity that we are facing on 4G. Against 4G, it will be uh, up, to, up to 100 times more speed so, uh, and capacity. That means we can access uh, a beautiful video or pictures uh, very quickly without waiting. Uh, so that, that's will be, and 
machine to machine communication with IoT would be very fast, seamless, and so all those things, 5G becomes so essential yeah, it's to, to, the, to the power of the United States. Okay? And the world. Yes, of course, of course. But what? the U.S. shouldn't be uh, lagged behind uh, 5G network uh, you know, penetration. Right. If Sprint uh, is not allowed to merge with T-Mobile, will it still be able to forge its own way? Or has it become a lot more difficult? It's tough. It's tough. It has been tough. Uh, so uh, I think this uh, consolidation with uh, Marja would uh, make uh, Sprint uh, uh, a better position and make the U.S. citizens uh, better, better service access. You're going to have a very busy summer, conceivably, also, between that deal, finding out, yes. Uber, if it goes public, any number of other. I guess Slack also is another one yes. in your portfolio that yes. Yes. you don't lack for uh, having very busy days. Well, I'm fun, having fun. <laughs> and you want to keep doing this, I yes. assume, for, yes. for years to come? Yes. It is excitement. It is excitement. I would, I would, I would love to continue. It's too good to stop. <laughs> Um, and within SoftBank itself, just in terms of the leadership, yes. um, how do you see it? You know, there's been some reporting of clashes of personality between Marcelo and Rajiv. Um, is that true? And no, no, do you no. welcome that? Is that a, a positive thing in some way? Or? No, no. They, 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 they're good guys, they're good friends and good partners. Of course, uh, once in a while, there's a difference in opinion about me and them, or between them, or other management. But, uh, uh, you know, always good to have a little bit of a healthy competition or tension, because uh, that way we work harder, you know, it's for any organization, any family members. But they are both uh, very good partners and, you know, happy. So happy you're happy with the team happy that you have in place of, right now? Of course, of course. Uh, and finally, let's end on uh, the greatest investment maybe that was ever made. You know what that is, mm -hmm. Alibaba. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Alibaba, fantastic. You, you gonna, you gonna monetize any more of that? I'd like to own as uh, as long as possible. It's still growing forty percent a year in revenue, and the profit will continue to you know sky skyrocket. So you believe that? You believe I, the growth I, I, potential for Alibaba just continues unabated for years to come? I, I am totally a believer. And Jack's no longer being sort of at the helm. Uh, in, does that matter? Does Jack Ma's kind of departure, I mean, from the company make a difference? No, uh, Jack is, will still remain as the, uh, the largest individual shareholder, SoftBank still remain the largest uh, 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 company holder. And uh, we are good partner, good friends. Jack still, um, you know, uh, guide the Daniel and the management, the direction. And Jack has been, um, you know, tutoring or, or uh, uh, mentoring. Uh, the team, um, so I think that Jack will continue to be important visionary to help management uh, whenever they need uh, advice. He, he's always be there. But but Jack's uh, for a long time uh, he was telling me uh, that you know his his style is to let the people under them, young people, uh, arise and grow uh, as quickly as possible so that he would not uh, have to do day-to-day -day, uh, and he can still think uh, philosophical you know, right. direction. He, wasn't, he was an educator. He yes. kind of likes that idea. Yes. The two of you seem to have similar visions, yes. optimistic visions of yes. where the world is going, yes. Yes. don't you? I mean, yes. I would assume you have some interesting conversations. Yes. He's he's fantastic guy, fantastic friend, fantastic partner. I see him face to face almost every month, e even now. You do. You see yes, him as much yes. as once a month. Yes, once a month, at least tw uh, once a uh, two months. Uh, we chat all the time. Uh, 
uh, not just uh, business, uh, we're good, great friends. Um, and you can assure me that the AI future you see, Moss, is going to be a good one? We're not Definitely. going to just become slaves to the robots? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Good ones. Well, listen, I appreciate your taking time. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much.